so you, you can show I know I look funny and uh, okay so I don't know if you will see the difference but in this moment I can see here through this the telangiectasias as well as you saw in that movie in that video clip that I showed you because I'm watching through a polarized lens I don't think you can see them as well as I can Margarita what do you think watching watching the television can you see them well no. oh. okay so uh, this is why it's going to be a bit difficult to show you that wonderful result. One thing I'm sure though is that you can see you can see this little spider here and now I'm going to I'm going to treat it and you, I hope you can see that it disappeared immediately. Is it visible from the hole? I, can I hear the answer if someone answers me? No. Sì, proviamo, però lì non vedo niente io. Okay. Um, I'd like to have some kind of answer from the from the audience if if this has disappeared to your eyes. Otherwise, we're just wasting time if you cannot see what I'm doing. In the meanwhile, I shall go on with these telangiectasias. Now the organizers want to take care of my hair, so if they have brought in the other device, you will see that in a minute. Now, Margarita, you have to help me because if I look at the TV to see if it's visible, nobody can see here. Is this visible now? Um, even with the double light? Wait. You tell me, is this better? Now? Huh? The same? Okay, no, it has to be this way. Okay, I think you'll be able to see it disappearing now. Is it visible? Okay, now you are seeing the, you're watching the manual way of treating this uh, diffuse capillary telangiectasias. Now, if some of you are lazy, there's also another way, which is with the scanner. I'm going to show it to you on the nose. Just one second, now, now I'll disappear for a second, just to change from the handpiece to the scanner. 
You see here instead of the SX index we have the VX. Now it has nothing to do with the index that you saw on the CO2 laser. Over there it was all about changing the pulse duration. Here we change the distance between the spots as I've shown you in one of the slides. Okay? So one is the most dense. Eight is when they are apart. One is actually almost full coverage. And uh, um, Can I have uh, sorry, my scatula also? No, yeah, that one. There was some red here. Okay, yes. I just want to show what's going on. Okay. Um, this is the way it will go. You see, it, it's also random. It does not make the shots one after the other sequentially. So this is how we avoid overheating in the same spot. And this is also why it is tolerable. Now that was quite slow. Here, for, for darker skin types, it's better to have it slow. For uh, lighter skin types like this one, we can go much faster by decreasing the time off. It means the time between pulses. And then it goes this way. Very, very fast. For example, if I have to treat a capillary malformation, I will go this way. Now I'll make it something in between. Okay, and I will treat this area. And there's absolutely no problem with the eyes. If you look at this with your naked eyes, you're just a bit blinded like looking at a flash lamp, but it, it really cannot cause any harm. And I don't know if you can see it from there, but here with this headlight on, I can see that this square is cleared up of its telangiectasias, okay? I can show it to you now on the nose. I think you have to come this other way and then it will be easier to see. Okay, with, with this headlight on, I can definitely see that in this square the telangiectasias have improved. It's not like to do it manually. If you do it manually, it's much, much better. But if it is too late and the area is too big and you're too tired, or like at my age in the evening your vision is not the best in the world you can rely on the scanner and still get a good clearance and you can definitely see compare this area almost no telangiectasias look at the untreated areas there are many more now I've changed here the mixto is off so we just have a regular square. Uh, do you have anything I can show it on? Anything red? Okay, so you, you can see here now it, it won't jump, it will be sequential. You see the difference? This is a classical scanner. I'm moving a little bit because everything is in the air. Okay, so if you want to treat, for example, a cafe au lait spot or a pigmented lesion that is very thick, you want to do it this way and I'm going to reduce the fluence to show you what happens if you do this on telangiectasias it's also okay it's just more painful uh, tell the lady please that it will be a bit more painful I'll only do it once but uh, not to be afraid. okay
Okay, it is still tolerable, the effect is much less because I reduce the fluence. Any questions that, would you, that you would like to ask? We cannot hear you anyway. Can we hear them? Mm? Let's see, it's not so mm. terrible. Okay. So, you already see the change of color. And what is nice about this wavelength, and this is another reason why I like to use it for vaporizing pigmented lesions, is that if by mistake I put a few spots around here, nothing will happen, or on my hand. Nothing will happen because there's not enough pigment. Okay? But, if I keep on hitting here, then I will get my reaction because there's a lot of melanin here and it absorbs a lot of optical energy and transforms it into thermal energy. And I don't need to be too scared as I would be with the Erbium Yag or CO2 that, oops, if I move, I can put a hole here and cause bad scarring. So you see I'm going through all the scales of the temperatures, going up to 90 and then 100 degrees and you can see the volume of the lesion decreasing, some smoke, and then I just move around. If you touch it with your finger, you feel it's very, very hot. I just need to insist and now if I want to if I want now that the lesion is desensitized because of the heat I can go much faster and uh, our friend here can tell us if this is hurting too much or not in the beginning it will hurt much she said that at the beginning it was more painful but and now, now you it's can. Hot. Now it's very hot because mm. I'm going fast. But it doesn't work. Okay, so it is tedious to do it in in a longer time. Oh. But the longer time needs mo uh, means more control and less risk of bad scarring. And this is finished. done. You don't want it to be very, very flat. You want to leave about half a millimeter of tissue that will go, that will become an escar and then it will shed off and there won't be any other lesion. Of course you want to have the patient back after a few months for, uh, for follow-up just in case the treatment was not complete. If you leave this very, very fine rays uh, and if you don't end up with a flat surface, it's almost impossible that we'll have a scar. Now, with the same settings, I'll show you something else that I usually do. You see this uh, very small anjoma here. <laughs> you just touch it and it's gone. Okay, this is coagulated and this one also finished okay a little coagulation non-ablative no scar nothing it's tolerable and you don't need really to play too much with the settings you just reach your end point and that's it that's the end of the treatment thank you very much